PLC app is a Control-X Automation IEC 61131 programming languages tool. This is the CODASYS environment that has been used in past Rexroth controllers, and it includes programming languages like ladder logic, structured text, and sequential function blocks. These programming languages were built for machine control and contain features to help with troubleshooting as well. The PLC app communicates directly with the Control-X core data layer to pull in system data and communicate to other Control-X core apps. The real power of the PLC app is in the function block libraries. These libraries help you quickly implement pre-configured code to help you with different motion and communications functions. Third-party libraries from other vendors can be implemented which can increase the programming power and custom libraries can be developed to take your own commonly used code or intellectual property from one project to another. Here are some instructions to help get a simple PLC program up and running on your demo unit. So the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and open up Control-X Works and take a look at what uh, controls we have connected on the network and other virtual controls. So we're going to go ahead and go online with this Control-X core at this IP address. So to do this, we will just go ahead and click on the IP address and it will open up a browser window. So you now enter in your username and your password. So the first thing that we have to verify is that we have the PLC app installed on our controller. So we will go into the install an app area from the home screen. And here we will see this control already has the PLC app installed, so we will not need to go ahead and install it. So we'll go ahead and click on this. Now we will open up the PLC app and we will see that there are no applications loaded on the controller. So from here we need to go ahead and open up the Control X PLC engineering. Now we will name our project. This project will be stored on our, on our PC and this location and then also synchronize and download to the controller uh, to be later uploaded uh, for service functionality. We will connect and synchronize all options to the controller. So the first thing we're going to do is make a simple application that just increments a counter on a variable. So the first thing that we will need to do is add a global variable object to our project. And we will leave this with the default name, default name GVL. Inside here, we will now go ahead and declare a variable. We will call this variable cycle counter. It will be of type dint. So we'll go into our PLC program that is currently scheduled to run in our main task. And we're just going to simply uh, add a line of code to increment this counter. So at this point, we will go ahead and compile our program and see if we have any compile errors. So we'll go up to build. Our, as we can see, our program now compiled with no errors. So now to go online with the PLC, we will go to the online menu and select login. Here we will verify that our certificate is, is trusted. So we will go ahead and hit OK. And now we must enter in our username and password again for security reasons. Now that it's downloaded, we'll go ahead and hit the play button to start running the PLC. Now we will see that our counter is now incrementing. So now we will go ahead and add a program to jog the axes that we created previously with the Motion app. So to do this, we will go ahead and log out of our PLC. Let's go ahead and verify the name of our axes. So I'll go back to the Motion tab, the Axis configurations. We now see we see we have Axis X, Y, and Z, and in feed. So the first thing that we will do is go back into the global variable area, and we will define our axis axis ref variables. 
A simple way to declare your variables quickly is to use an auto declare with the shift F2 key. So I will go ahead and declare my axis names with this wizard. So axis X, let's type axis ref. We will use for the initialization, we have to initialize the name of our axes using a string with the same name that we had configured in the motion app. So now that we have the declaration for axis X, we will go ahead and copy and paste it. And we will create our definitions for Y and Z. So now we need to create a program which we will use to move our axes. So we'll go back to the application area and we'll add another object, which will be a POU. In this case, we will call it motion frog, and we will implement this one in ladder logic. And the first thing we will do is we will schedule this program to be called in the main task. The next thing we need to do is we need to add the library that gives us the, the function blocks to control the motion using PLC open function blocks. We'll go ahead and we will add a library. A quick way is to search for PLC open. So we will see inside this library we have a range of POUs, in this case for single axis move commands. Move absolute, move relative, move jog. And we will now add some program variables to trigger our moves. So we will add a reset variable, an enable, and a jog variable. So now we will add the functions, the corresponding functions for these commands. So for reset, we will add a box. And we will use the MC reset function block. We now have to declare each instance of the function block. Tie it to axis X. And we'll need to remove these question mark fields on the output of each block. So we will now make three copies of, we'll make two copies of this function block for the X, for the Y, and the Z. Now we will add the logic to enable our drives. In this case, we will insert a box and go into the PLC open library function block area and we will pick the MC power block. And then we will make additional copies for each axis. And then lastly, we will add a jog command for each axis. only set it up to jog in the forward direction. And we'll arbitrarily set a speed of 1000 millimeters per minute. Now we will make two more copies of this for the X and the Y. Now we will see if we're able to compile the program. So we have no errors, so we will go ahead and log in and go online. In this case, we were able to do an online edit, which will keep the existing program running while we download the new code changes. So to verify that this works, we'll go ahead and turn on the enable. Now see that all of our drives are enabled.
write the values to set our jog bit to true. Now our drives are jogging, so we will go back into the application under motion and verify that the axes are moving. So we'll go into the access commissioning screen, press the refresh values, and we were able to see that our X, Y, and Z are now jogging.